Thank you for those staying for my talk after the best paper talk. <laughs> and don't feel bad if you want to leave. Okay, I understand. Okay, so this is a joint work with uh, Christopher Liao, who is also here, and also Aranyak Mehta. Okay, so on a high level, um, in online advertising, there are two types of advertisers. There's manual bidding advertisers that uh, they specify a bid for each separate keyword. And their goal is to maximize their profit, which is their value minus payment. And there's also automated uh, bidding advertisers that they don't specify a bid for each keyword, but they specify some high level constraints. For example, they may say, my average cost per conversion is no more than $5. And they may also say, okay, I have a total budget of $20. And their goal is to maximize their value subject to these constraints. So for each auto bidding advertiser, there is an auto bidder agent that takes these constraints and target as input and convert these constraints to a bid to each keyword. Cool. So we want to study equilibrium efficiency in this auto bidding world. And um, for the welfare definition, we adopt the uh, liquid welfare, which is the maximum of the amount of money that a bidder are willing to pay for the query statement. Um, for example, suppose um, there are two bidders and a single query. And suppose bidder one has a budget of 10 and value of eight. Uh, their liquid welfare will be, okay. Their liquid welfare will be uh, the smaller of these two because they're not willing to pay more than their budget. They're also not willing to pay for more than the value they get from the query. Um, and for bidder two, they have a higher value and than their budget. So if they got a query, their liquid welfare is, their budget is five. So though bidder two has a much higher value, their liquid welfare is smaller. And um, in this work, we want to study um, auction de design under this uh, auto bidding setting. And uh, we want to see what's the efficiency of some well-known auctions and maybe some other auctions. So to measure the efficiency, we use the concept of price of key, which is the worst case uh, scenario ratio between the optimal centralized liquid welfare and the equilibrium liquid welfare. <laughs> So the optimal of POA is one, which means uh, in equilibrium, we always get the optimal uh, liquid allocation. Okay, so uh, this is the formal definition. Um, for a bidder I and query J, we let XIJ denote the probability that bidder I wins query J. So for a deterministic auction, um, this XIJ is always either zero or one. Uh, for a randomized mechanism, this could be something between zero and one and we let vij denote bidder i's value of query j, and cij denotes the cost of bidder i in the case that they win query j. And finally, we let capital bi denote bidder i's total budget. And there are two constraints we consider. The first one is um, RS, or return on spend, which is bidder i's um, total expected value is no less than their total expected co cost. And the second one is budget constraint, which means a bidder's total expected cost is no more than their budget. And I want to mention that um, there is there are multiple bidding strategies we consider in this talk. Uh, one of them is uniform bidding, which means for each bidder I, it has a uniform multiplier on its value to each query. So when they raise their bid, they raise their bid uniformly on the query. And when they lower their bid, also lower the bid universally, um, uh, uniformly on all the query. Uh, so before we look at the price of key results, I want to first talk about the optimal allocation for the two cases with or without budget constraint. Okay. So if there's no budget constraint, um, it's easy that um, we can just allocate each query to the bidder with the highest value of it. So suppose for this example, this two bidder has the same value to the query, the optimal way to allocate it is just to assign this query to an arbitrary bidder and we get a total liquid welfare of 10, which is optimal. But uh, if there are like budget constraints of these two bidders, suppose they both have a value of 10 to the query, but they both have a budget of only five. Now, if we constrain ourselves to deterministic allocation, then um, the optimal way is to do nothing but still allocate this query to an arbitrary bidder. And by the definition of liquid welfare, <coughs> we only have a total liquid welfare of five. But if we can actually do randomized allocation and we can split this query to allocate it to each bidder with probably one half, then uh, each one of them get a uh, expected value of five. So they each get a uh, liquid welfare of five. And we can get a better 
like total social liquid welfare of 10. So we can see that uh, when there's budget constraint, deterministic allocation might not be optimal. And because of that, we also have two different definitions of price of energy. The first one is that we compare the liquid, liquid welfare of an equilibrium with the optimal centralized randomized allocation. And the second one we call integral POA or IPOA, where we compare the optimal liquid welfare with the optimal centralized uh, determinist allocation. And we already know that um, if there's no budget constraint, then POA is the same as IPOA. And there are several auctions we study, include uh, first price auction, randomized first price auction, uh, price auction and others. Uh, we want to note one thing that, um, so here the POA and IPOA results are for um, mechanisms when an equilibrium exists. So we didn't really prove the existence of equilibrium in this work, and that would be uh, interesting future work to explore. Um, and we can actually generalize the previous result uh, example to n bidders that each has a value of n to the query, but only a budget of one. So we can see there's already a gap of n between the optimal deterministic allocation and optimal randomized allocation. So as a result, we know any deterministic auction has a POA of at least n, where n is the number of advertisers. Okay, so here let's first look at um, <coughs> the IPOA results. Um, this 2019 one paper studied second price auction, and they show that uniform bidding is actually optimal for the bidders and also gives the best possible integral POA of two. Um, for first price auction, um, there are two papers study deciding that um, when there's only RS but no budget constraint, and they show that non-uniform bidding gives a POA of, um, or IPOA of two, and uniform bidding can actually get an optimal POA of one, but it's, it might not be optimal for the bidders. So for this work, we first generalize um, the non-uniform bidding result of two in the setting with both RS budget constraints and show that it still holds, um, at least for IPO it still holds. And for uniform bidding, it's interesting that it actually makes things much worse. So the POA, IPOA could be N in this case, and uh, intuitively, the reason is that um, a bidder could be in a case that when they have a budget constraint, they either get none of these queries, and if they want to raise their bid, because they need to raise it uniformly on all the queries, they will be in a case that they will break their budget, so they cannot do it. So they're stuck in a case that uh, get nothing or break their budget. Okay. So next, let's look at the POA results. So for first price auction, in the case that without budget constraint, we know POA is the same as IPOA, so two is still here. And in this work, first we show that any deterministic um, auction actually has a POA at least N, so this still holds for first price auction. But um, if we just relax it with a reasonable assumption to say that any bidder's value to any query is no more than this bidder's total budget. So with this small assumption, we can show that POA can actually be improved to two. And finally, we already know that uniform bid is not going to help here. It has a bad POA because of the budget constraint that a bidder can get stuck. So um, we know that deterministic uh, auctions cannot be uh, getting a smaller POA if we don't have any assumption. So how about <coughs> randomized auctions? Uh, here we consider this um, paper of um, randomized first price auction, which was proposed last year's dub, dub, dub. And suppose there are N bidders, and their bids are ranked by B1 more than B2 more than Bn. And we only look at the top two bids. So if bid one is more than alpha times B2, which alpha is a parameter, uh, the tunable parameter. So if B1 is much larger than B2, then bidder one wins with probability one. Otherwise, we let bidder one with, uh, wins with probability log B1 over B2 and bidder two wins with probably one minus that. So with this algorithm, they show that um, if there are only two bidders, and if we only have RS constraint, we can get a POA of 1.8. And for this work, we still, um, so first we generalize that result to the setting with both RS and budget constraint and show that the 1.8 result still holds. And uh, interestingly, for uniform bidding now, we can get a smaller POA compared with non-uniform bidding. 
And the reason is um, because this is a randomized algorithm. So when bidder are trying to raise their bid a little bit to win more queries, they can actually win more fractional queries. So they're not no longer stuck uh, as the case in the ran, uh, deterministic auctions. Okay, so this is a result for two bidders that we can get some smaller POA, but we don't know um, if we have multiple bidders, more than two, and if we don't have extra constraints, uh, how good can we get in terms of POA? So finally, we propose this um, quasi-proportional POA. Uh, still, uh, again, we have a parameter alpha, and uh, the allocation rule is to actually um, allocate each bidder's, um, the query to each bidder proportionally to their bid to the um, power of alpha. So if we do that, uh, we can show that POA actually approaches to as alpha approaches infinity. Uh, note that this mechanism becomes very close to a first price auction when alpha approaches to infinity, but it's not the same as first price auction because there's always randomness in it. And uh, this um, concludes our work. And these are some papers I've mentioned. And thank you. I'm happy to take any questions.